the resources that we'll be talking about can go for both eastern, western, and southwestern Washington. Uh, and these are the folks that have a lot of the contacts. Okay, uh, welcome to the workshop, uh, Spanish language media in the Washington State. My name is Mario Zabaleta. I'm uh, originally from Mexico City, and uh, this beautiful lady is my co-partner, my co-producer, but most important, she's my wife. <laughs> so, yeah, we've been together most of uh, almost 40 years. We have been working together, producing uh, TV uh, back in Mexico <coughs> in the mid-80s, and then um, in 1986, we moved from Mexico City to Anchorage, Alaska. So we spent 10 years living in Alaska, and so uh, that's how we start our, uh, our adventure as an immigrant, first generation immigrant. And uh, in that time, in 1991, Univision Network, the largest network in the country, find us. So we start uh, working and producing news for them, uh, covering Alaska, but not many Latinos in Alaska. So we decided to move in, uh, to Seattle in 1996. So since then, we have been covering the Pacific Northwest for not just for the production network, but we decided to create our own pro, uh, production company, Latino Northwest Communication. We are a bilingual, uh, full, uh, full house video production company based in Seattle, but we know very well this area. We have been traveling toward me, 75% of the state. We know very well our community uh, from the fields or from the farm workers' fields to the uh, CEOs in, uh, in Seattle. In, uh, in, uh, it's been an amazing uh, way to, to, to learn more about the, the, the life, especially in this part of the, of the, of the state. And, um, and I'm going to pass the microphone to, to Marta now. Okay. I'll pass you this. Okay. <clears throat> Hello. Thank you for being here today. Like Mary said, it's a beautiful day, and then you decide to spend in it with us. Um, yes, we have been in the Northwest for more than half of our lives, and as immigrants covering news in the area, we had had the opportunity to really learn about how we think as immigrants, you know, how we, our behavior and our needs, and, um, and so that gave us covering the news, Oregon, Washington, and Alaska for the network, gave us like a, this sense of, of what is important for us. And so we learned pretty early how important it was to communicate with our community in our own language, in a, in a very appropriate uh, cultural way. So that was one of the, I think, the treasures that we, that we got uh, from that experience, and that is why we decided to create Latino Northwest Communication, because we, at that time in 1996, 98, we we felt there was not it was a lack of 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 uh, companies that really addressed uh, our community in in a culturally appropriate way, and so we we knew that we that we knew the language, we knew the culture, so that is why we wanted to create this and uh, we we're not producing news anymore i think we had been like six years we yeah. we stopped uh, working for the network because we wanted to create that we saw the need we met uh mary like what 10 years ago or something like that and so we, we saw the need that was <coughs> like for our community to really get the information that you know help contribute to 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 uh, uh, to the society in terms of being part of, of you know of when it comes to emergency or anything. So that is why we create Latino Novos Communications. Next. Okay, we are talking about um, Latinos now. So Mario is going to talk about why it's important to reach Latinos. You probably already know the Latino the Latino community is the, one of the fastest minority groups in the country, and perhaps in the Washington state. Uh, just, uh, I mean, the last census gives us uh, one million something more or less uh, in Washington state. That means the 13.4% uh, of the, the entire uh, population in the state. But according with the uh, um, labor department, 
pretty much we are between one million and one and a half million uh, Latinos living in the state, and uh, it's very uh, it's a very diverse community uh, because uh, the last fifteen years a lot of people from Central America and South of Mexico uh, are indigenous people. Is that uh, is people, the, the monolingual community, they just speak their language. For example, people from Oaxaca, Mexico, they speak at least 13 languages. And uh, in, in Central America, in Guatemala, Honduras, they speak different languages. So in, in order to, to reach uh, this diverse, diverse, diverse community, uh, we, not, we have to learn even uh, not just the language, but the cultural aspect. So uh, we know that the media is the most effective tool to inform and educate the community. And do uh, you want to continue to? Yeah. So, um, sorry, we have to share. We always share. So um, talking about how media, and you know that media is the most, probably the most powerful <coughs> way to reach the community, any community, right? So. Um, when it comes to an emergency, you know, we have seen radio is one of the most effective and everyday uh, media that we use. TV, of course, uh, with all the elements, the visual, the audio elements. But uh, now we have the, the, the digital media that has also the, this, this power that we have it all in our phones. So, um, um, so we, we know the media is important, but now we, um, the point that we want to make in this case is that um, Spanish language media is the best way to reach Latinos. See, knowing that the, the, the we all can reach out the, the community, but if you, wanna, if you need to reach this specific market, the, the best way to do it, you have to do it in, in Spanish and in a culturally uh, appropriate way. So, and then I let Mario talk about that aspect. Yeah, uh, I, I just mentioned before how important it is to know the community. And like just Marta said, that it's a very important to, uh, if you develop some kind of material, any material, then you really want to reach the, the Latino community, especially in this area, in the agriculture area. Most of the cold, the so-called uh, newcomers, they just speak one language, Spanish. You know, and if you are uh, in fires during the summer, if you want to reach that that uh, uh, that community, it is very important to uh, for you to develop from the very key be be beginning uh, a message in Spanish. We know that it is sometimes very hard because in, uh, departments and the cities. They don't have the, you don't have the, the, the budget, but uh, it's a lot of uh, resources out there that, that you can uh, rely on. And uh, so make sure that when you develop some kind of campaign, you want to reach the Latino community, try and think, how are you going to plan that message from the very beginning in Spanish? And, and it's very important because in uh, the, the, our community, uh, we are Kind of a, a, we are coming from a, from a different from different countries that we don't trust in the government. So when the time comes from our community to receive a message from the government, most of the time it's hard for them to really uh, see as a trust trusted messenger. So if you want to reach the, the this special uh, specific community, try to hire or try to spend spend some money in the budget. Or try to put uh, a budget, in that way you are going to be more success, successful in your uh, in your campaigns. And with that, I would like to uh, invite you guys to, if you have any questions, please don't don't hesitate and stop us. We can, you know, we'll be happy to to answer any questions that you may have. Um, so nobody has any questions so far. Okay. Oh yes, I do actually. <clears throat> So I understand, you know, when you start a Spanish language campaign, you start it in Spanish, like, like you want to start from the beginning to translate what's happening. So there's not that, old, you know, working backwards. 
But I'm also curious, have you been involved in campaigns that are um, with another language that you have to really start back with them? Like, this, do you know what I mean? Like, say it's a Vietnamese campaign, and there might be another element in, in Somali, too. So, like, how do you get agreement on where to start? Well, I guess as immigrants, you know, you kind of, we, we tend to understand each other in a way that what really drives you to to something like Mari was explaining most many of of immigrants we come from uh, not trusted governments you know or whatever the history is so we had that like like it's right there in the back of our minds so <laughs> when we hear government uh, it's just like uh, it's just scary for some people so, but, and this can happen also to Vietnamese, to Samoans, to anyone. So, and then we, we had that experience of being in a, this different culture, trying to speak a language, trying to, <coughs> to be part of the society, but we don't know how because we have these barriers. <coughs> and so, yes, we have produced things for other cultures. And I think having the empathy and the sensibility, that it, that helps. But definitely, I will say we're the best in Latinos because that's our culture. And that's what we always recommend. Mm -hmm. We recommend every time you're going to talk to a one hour, a, develop a campaign. And sometimes uh, other companies said, OK, we can translate that script. We have that developed in English. We can just translate it. And yes, it can but you have to not translate, but transcreate, because we have to have the, the correct way to talk, to address that community in a cultural appropriate way. And if you have the images that really reflect that community, that's even better, that's more effective. That has to do with the, your goal of reaching out. Otherwise, it's just gonna look like another um, person pretending to speak Spanish or, you know, so it's not going to connect on considerably. So the idea is to be successful. And somehow that was the way that we met with Mary. Mary invited us to, if that was in night, it was 2011 when, when we met Mary. She found us and said, I, I want to I wanna reach out Latinos for a campaign that has to do with hazardous problems products uh, using it at, at, at home. And so she just came with the idea. And she, but she was very specific. And then what we did, we, we create this, this script from scratch. So we create, we brought, we, we involved uh, Latino actors and we, we, we did everything like from, from the beginning. So the idea was really conceived with the cultural <coughs> in mind. And I think it was a very um, effective campaign. I think it was it was recognized mm -hmm. somehow <coughs> nationally, right? We got a national, uh, what's it, runner-up award. Yeah. Right. So here's some example. These are three videos that we did with that campaign. And so, and then we'll show you another couple of examples. And please, if you have any questions, we'll happy. The campaign was very simple, very simple videos, uh, more like a soap opera style. Yeah, that ah, okay. Was a very good idea. That was a very good But yeah, that was a very, uh, very catchy. So <laughs> I'm going to play the first one to all the Quiero jugo, mamá. Espera un momento, Carlitos, voy por la puerta. Hola. Hola, Rosy. Hola, casa. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, bien, gracias. Qué bien, qué bien. Ay, Carlitos, eso no es jugo. Laura, los productos químicos nunca deben estar al alcance de los niños. Ay, no pensé. Ellos no piensan como adultos y se pueden confundir con envases como este que es parecido al de los alimentos. ¿Sabías que los productos de limpieza son una de las causas más comunes de envenenamiento de los niños en casa? Por eso debemos de tener especial cuidado con los que dice Danger o Poison. Ay, Rosy, si Carlitos hubiera tomado eso. Ay, qué bueno sí. que estamos acá. Por eso no hay que dejar los productos químicos al alcance de los niños. Acuérdate, más vale prevenir que lamentar. Sí, cierto.
Para más información sobre cómo proteger a su familia de productos tóxicos en el hogar, llame al 1-888-869-4233. Prima, ¿qué pasó? ¿Por qué te trajeron al hospital? Es que me intoxiqué. ¿Cómo? Es que estaba lavando el baño con cloro y pensé que sería más efectivo agregarle otro producto que tenía amoníaco. Cuando de repente me empecé a ahogar, apenas alcancé a salir del baño y luego me desperté aquí. María, los productos de limpieza son peligrosos y más si lo mezclamos, pues crean gases tóxicos que pueden causar incluso la muerte. Ay, con razón, el doctor me dijo que de no haber salido a tiempo del baño no lo hubiera contado. Por eso, antes de usar cualquier producto de limpieza, hay que leer las instrucciones. Pero es que yo todavía no entiendo mucho inglés. Pues apréndete esto. Si la etiqueta dice danger o poison, mejor no usarlo. Para información en español sobre cómo protegerse usted y su familia de productos tóxicos en el hogar, llame al 1-888-869-4233. And this one is going to be the, the, the last of the this area. We produce six uh, episodes for this area. So this is the, the very last one. ¡Ay, Carlitos, es unos jugos! La campaña sobre productos tóxicos eh, me pareció muy interesante y muy importante. Ver cómo se parecen los productos a las cosas que consumimos al diario. Que a veces los niños lo pueden tomar como un refresco, como se miraba ahí el queso y el comment, que se parecen verdes los dos. Y sí que los niños se confunden. Si uno los deja ahí de modo que ellos los agarren, ¿verdad? Prima, ¿qué pasó? ¿Por qué te trajeron al hospital? Es que me intoxiqué. Mezclar los productos, la peor idea que podríamos tener. Yo tuve una experiencia hace mucho cuando se me ocurrió mezclar el cloro con el, la amonía. Empezó la botella a sacar espuma y me dice mi esposo, quítame eso de aquí. Entonces lo fuimos y lo pusimos en medio de la yarda y explotó. Entonces no es una exageración, sino que es algo que debemos aprender. Por los niños, por nosotros, nuestra salud. Para más información, llame al 1-888-869-4233. Servicio disponible en español. Something important to consider when you produce something in video, add subtitles to whatever you want to. It's in Spanish, English title, or vice versa. If it's in English, with can find subtitles. That way you can reach more people. So uh, the next one is going to be uh, the census. Census. Uh, this this one, the census and COVID, was um, created to. We were in the middle of COVID, so the city of Seattle wanted to reach out the community to make sure that they were going to participate. But it, we found that it was really important to make the point of why it's important to participate in the census because. Right in that, in the middle of the pandemic, we needed to have all those resources for survival, for education, for everything, for health. So this was created in Spanish and talking about what Mario was mentioning um, with some key messages in indigenous languages that are spoken around the state. These are, there are more indigenous languages, but in that moment we found that those three languages were the most uh, common. Yeah, right now uh, I believe that uh, the, the state are serving at least 13 indigenous uh, groups from different parts of Latin America. Because now, even from South America, from Ecuador, and from Peru, they have been there are like these three different languages. So now the, the, the state is trying to create in at least 30 different languages. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Minimum. Minimum. Yeah. So. Desde el 20 de julio, los representantes del censo comenzaron a visitar los hogares donde aún no se ha respondido al cuestionario. Participar en el censo es nuestro deber cívico y al contarte a ti y a todas las personas que viven en tu hogar, ayudarás a que recursos de salud, educación y otros beneficios lleguen a tu comunidad. Si no has contestado el cuestionario, no esperes a que un representante venga a tu puerta. Evita el contacto físico y contéstalo usando tu teléfono o tu computadora en 2020census.gov. Si todos nos contamos en el censo, hacemos a nuestra comunidad más fuerte. En Gaxiamin de Esmiyukuriak Censo Aru, 
wina parandaks kuchar ire kupwan shi ya ulol teju purabel wesa chule senso chun chu yes cheju toda wal non te yon tu coso yo no senso so aku kanu kanyu yo te kuaka participando en el censo 2020 podemos mejorar nuestro futuro all right so in the next and last one is is the the uh, the Department of State of the state of Washington need, wanted to reach out Latino community to make sure that they were part going to participate. And something that I want to point out in this next piece is that for us was important that that message was coming from trusted voices. So we went around the state and found the leaders, the Latino leaders in the, in the specific uh, areas. In, in fact, we have one from here, from Wenatchee. So, um, to inviting people to vote. So here it is. ¿Cuáles son los temas que más preocupan a la comunidad latina del estado de Washington en estas próximas elecciones? Es pues la salud. La migración. El medio ambiente. La inflación. Issues regarding women's rights. El control de armas. La seguridad pública. Para crear un mundo mejor para los niños. Y para elegir a quienes decidirán los asuntos que más nos interesan. Este próximo 8 de noviembre. Todos los latinos elegibles debemos votar. Para que nuestra voz se escuche. Somos la comunidad de mayor crecimiento. Y tenemos que ser parte activa y responsable de la sociedad. Votar es seguro y confidencial. Con nuestro voto ayudamos a definir el rumbo de nuestro estado y de nuestra nación. Por lo que nuestra participación en estas elecciones de medio término es fundamental. Si usted o alguien de su familia es elegible para votar y aún no se han registrado, pueden hacerlo por internet hasta el 31 de octubre en votewa.gov o bajar la solicitud ingresando a sos.wa.gov diagonal elections diagonal voters y enviarla por correo para que llegue antes del 31 de octubre. También puede registrarse en persona en la oficina electoral de su condado. Los requisitos son tener la ciudadanía de los Estados Unidos, ser mayor de 18 años y mostrar una identificación que pruebe que es residente del estado de Washington. Hoy, más que nunca, nuestro voto es vital. Es nuestro derecho. Es nuestra voz. Es nuestro deber. Y es nuestro poder. Ok, uh, well, this is it from the campaign. And uh, the next slide is, uh, and I'm going to be talking about the state of the Latino media in the state of Washington. I, I was trying to put together a list of uh, media outlets and, uh, from Western Washington as well as Eastern Washington. And I'm pretty sure that it's not complete because every day new outlets, especially, especially uh, digital outlets, are emerging in, in uh, different parts of the state. Bigger places here in, the, in, uh, in Eastern Washington is still today. Uh, I'm going to start from, from top, the Sol de Yakima, in Yakima County, and they cover uh, pretty much Yakima and uh, tri -city, the Tri-City areas. La Voz is mainly uh, is uh, Tri-City, and La Voz is probably one, one of the oldest news, newspapers in the state, in the Spanish. And then to the cities came later, uh, Albert Torres created this uh, newspaper. It's, uh, most of them are a bi monthly. No, we don't have any uh, major newspaper in Spanish yet. That's that's very sad. But we don't have any in the state. So then uh, Radio Cadena, KBNA. This is the one of the best uh, public radio station in the country. That was the very first one uh, to broadcast 24/7 in Spanish. And they are turning 45, 47 years this, this October. It's called La Voz de Campesino, the voice of the farm workers. And there's an amazing project. It is a totally uh, community oriented uh, radio station. They work mainly with the volunteers. But it's a very useful uh, tool. And if you want to reach people in uh, Yakima Valley, uh, Lower Valley, and part of the Tri-Cities, 
the plan you can then make the, 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 your, your, the best option for you. Then I have uh, La Campesina, used to be part of Radio Cadena, now La Campesina belongs to the uh, another uh, La Campesina network that's based in California, but they are broadcasting in Tri Cities. And then uh, here in, in, uh, in this area, you have the La Pera Radio, there's a digital media outlet. They are producing re uh, radio content, but also some videos. And they are very close with uh, with uh, the lady. There was an, uh, another video of the boat. Alma Chacon. The, uh, Alma Chacon and uh, Cafe. Uh, Organization. I don't know if you're familiar with the people from Wenatchee. I don't know if you're familiar with Cafe. But uh, we have also a radio station in Spokane, and uh, one radio station. And also, uh, uh, the major players in the TV, Univision and Telemundo. Univision belongs to Sinclair and Telemundo belongs to NBC. So they are uh, uh, an affiliate from the national network, and they are producing uh, newscasts, uh, 30 minutes newscasts daily, but uh, the one in Yakima, they are really working with the community. They are uh, producing local content. The one in Seattle, they are having some uh, issues with uh, budget, but the one in Yakima, they are really uh, Active. producing. And I just found out yesterday, thanks to Mary, that another uh, network is coming to, uh, actually they opened like a four, six months ago, Estrella TV, Star TV. This, this network is based in, well, they are incorporated in, in California, but they are going to be working also covering Tri Cities in Yakima. I don't know their product. Uh, I was watching some of their shows and uh, more entertainment. I assume they are going to be covering events and all that stuff. But in terms of uh, uh, help you guys to, to, to engage with the community, uh, we're going to share that list. We have all the, the, the websites. And then and some, I'm, I'm going back to Western. And some of the, the, uh, well, the emails and contact information. And I'm going to talk a little bit of, uh, uh, from Western Washington. We have two newspapers, the Siete Dias, that's also uh, by monthly, uh, Golazo. There is a most sport, more uh, sports uh, uh, newspaper, and uh, uh, Golazo also uh, do well. They, they produce, uh, the, the editor produce a radio program. If, if I may add, I think some some of publications that you probably find, uh, because it's maybe a sport publication, I don't think it's, it's important, but sometimes those publications reach out the hardest to reach populations. So like in COVID, this um, this newspaper was doing an excellent work with, with the um, Department of Health, like promoting the vaccine and doing, you know, all the informing, the hard to reach population. Yeah, the, the, this guy, the owner of the newspaper, sponsored few uh, soccer teams during COVID. And the Department of Health give him the money, and they buy the shirts with the uh, vaccine. Vaccine and, and everything. So yeah, it was very, yeah. very yeah. well, like a the very yeah. good partnership yeah, that they created. Well, there. well done uh, campaign. So yeah, we have a uh, La Raza del Noroeste used to be a newspaper. Now it's only digital. And then we have a uh, few. Uh, uh, digital and radio live is a, a good, uh, very good one. Uh, VTR, VTR. VTR, they are in Tacoma, and they uh, cover also the radio is in South King County, and it's more uh, community oriented uh, radio station. It's a, a, a really impressive for people in Western Washington. They are they are good, and then we have Conexión Contigo is a, a radio program and. At least there, she's uh, Lupita Zamora is the owner of the and the host of the program. Has been in, uh, on air for about 10, 15 years. And Actitud Latina also as well. They are good. Plataforma Latina is kind of new, five, four or five years uh, old. And La Radio de Seattle, the Seattle, I'm sorry, belongs to a very large network. It's called uh, La Zeta and Buena. Uh, they are based in California, but their studio are in, in Arbor. And then El Rey 360, that belongs to CIMAR Community Health uh, Clinic. CIMAR owns Radio Academy in, in 
great in, uh, well, I want to say it because they are uh, planning to open a, a new registration here in Wenash. It's a very public and uh, so an excellent tool. It's going to be an excellent tool for everybody here in, in, in Wenatchee. And then uh, Univision Seattle and Telemundo Seattle. Telemundo belongs to Cairo. So it's kind of a new uh, station. There are just right now, they are just uh, uh, producing uh, commercials. They are now ready with their newscast program. But Univision, yes, they are being in the market for 15 years. So if you have any question, and believe it or not, sometimes I prefer to be behind my camera than <laughs> before behind my camera. We're not too I much of presenters. Speaker, but thank you so very much. And uh, if you have any questions, but we're going to share this list with you, and uh, and feel free to reach out to us through Mary in case you guys want to, you know, an advice for any specific campaign that you may have in mind. So I guess we're um, closing. We just want to close with this message. We just want to just remind you that to to reach Latinos, the, the way to go is to do it in Spanish. That's that's what we really recommend. And uh, and if you can do that, but with the, with the creating the concept and the idea from from scratch with the culturally appropriate way. And I think that that will guarantee your success. And thank you so much for coming today.